Hello, our viewers. You're very welcome on Family Farm. And with me, the farm girl, Brenda Mahoro, we are here at Tanza, yeah, with the RCC of Kampala. And we're going to be talking about a lot, a lot of things. Just know that you're going to be interested, you're going to be inspired, and you're going to love everything about it. Yes, for a prominent man who would be in office, who has busy schedules and has deadlines, is here doing the farming. So please, just stay tuned, and you're going to love everything everything. Thank you so much, Mr. Fred, for inviting us on your farm. Yeah, thank you. You're most welcome. Family TV, uh, my name is Bamwine Fred, Commissioner in President's Office in charge of Kampala Metropolitan. And uh, I reside here in Chanja. Uh, this farm is called Freba Farm, uh, which started a long time ago, about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, we started with three animals here, uh, but they have multiplied over time. Mm. Uh, it's a commercial farm. We sell animals and we sell milk. So over time, the farm has multiplied now to 40 animals. But um, before we talk of the 40 animals, I want to uh, express my gratitude to Family TV to have visited me and to appeal to you. Yeah to visit as many farms as possible, because most people have the potential, but they think it's not possible. The choice of this farm, initially I had a poultry farm here, and uh, when prices went up on feeds, it became difficult to compete with farm, with traders on food and maize bland. So I decided to change into animal production, cows. Uh, this farm, uh, I have about 40 animals, but we are making about 18 and we have production of 350 liters to 450 liters per day. And our highest animals are 40, 40 liters, and the minimum is 20 liters. But the issue which I want to appeal to the people is about 10 decimals here, and you can see the number of animals that are here. Mm. Um, I am sure that the majority of Ugandans have the capacity of raising one cow. What do you mean, Mr. Fred? It does not need you to have land. As long as you can have a space of about six feet, it's enough. You can see here, these are about 15, 18 feet. They are it is holding almost six cows. So I know majority of Ugandans have the capacity of raising one cow, even if you don't have land, mm. even if you are renting. When you're renting at home? Yes. Even if you are renting, you can still have a cow. Because, for instance, me, I go to city council where I find grass, I cut it. On the side of the road, I cut the grass, dry it, and come and store my Without own. paying any money? To who now? To actually, government, maybe to kiss. actually, government pays a lot of money to, to, to clear the and slash. So I'm helping them to remove that, that grass. But even along the roads, from Kampara, all the roads, you look at the side of the roads, there is plenty of grass. Who is the owner of that grass? Uh, so if one raise, go to one cow and raise it to produce at least a minimum of 20 liters, that family will be different. So I want to appeal to everybody. And when you come to a cow, it is very exciting. You are going, as you are going to see, a cow gives you milk for sale, it gives you milk for home consumption. It also gives you dung, which is a manure. It gives you uh, bio from bio product from biogas. It gives you fire for cooking and lighting, biogas. Mm -hmm. For the last 12 years, this family will, will depend on biogas for cooking. You, you, you no longer and I'm going to show you how they make it, and you're going to see it. Wow. Even one cow can give you the biogas? One cow can, depending on the number of uh, stoves you want to have. Mm. So one cow, two cows can give you even fire. You can know the number of the, the amount of charcoal now, how much charcoal it costs today. Uh, uh, the environmental like degree. The, yeah. the sack costs the sack about between 100. Yes. So, and me, I'm telling you that for the last 10 years, I don't know the price of charcoal. Amazing. And with this byproduct of, of biogas called biocillary, it is the best organic product, uh, manure that we have in this country and the world over. So I want to appeal to everybody that this is a venture that can be done by anybody. 
Like on this farm, I don't have any machine. I'm still using manual. There's nothing scientific here. This, this is cement. Up is uh, iron sheets. These are, this is eucalyptus. It's as simple as this. Yes, Fred, the process of building, like you, you said that here in Kampala, yes. everyone is able to able. at least to get one cow. Mm. So what is the process? If me, I've bought my cow. Mm. I'm still renting. So what is the process? Like no, someone can get just a, get a space of about 10 feet. You just get one iron sheet and, uh, and trees of eucalyptus. You bring your cow and put it there. The next day you can start even feeding it on green, green matter. But I would encourage, as you start on green matter, try to transit to dry matter. Because green matter is 60% water, and these dairy cows, we want them for milk, nothing else. Mm. It has no time to go to remove water, then reach on the food. So we encourage, uh, when you are feeding these cows, you feed them on dry matter, that is hay or silage, which is highly nutritious. Uh, this one helps you, because me, I started with three cows here. But over time, when you, when you see this construction, mm. it went on improving, it went on expanding as the, as the numbers were expanding. So don't say that because you have seen 40 animals here, therefore it becomes difficult for anybody to begin. I started with three, start with one. And once you start getting that money from milk of 20 liters, you, the appetite is going to grow and you'll have as many animals as you want. Mm. So, and uh, when you are looking after these cows, there are about five things you need to take into consideration. One is called passion. You have to have the passion before you ready. You have seen with my animals here. I saw how you were bonding with yes. them. Yes. You must have the passion to love them. Because <laughs> once they, didn't feed, they don't feed them, mm. they start making noise. Mm. Yes. That's when you know what has, either they have not got enough water, mm. not enough food, they report that we haven't got. Mm. Now you can hear the young one is, is crying, is saying I haven't got in my milk. <laughs> so that's one, you must have wow. the passion. Mm. The second issue is what you call management. And in management, there are a lot of components in management. Mm. One is hygiene and management. If you cannot eat from where your cows are, then they, they don't deserve to be there. For, I think that is the, the most challenge. That if we started out. eating from here, do you feel, feel any smell here? No. There's nothing. So hygiene is key. Because hygiene helps you to fight about diseases. So hygiene under management helps to fight diseases. Secondly, or thirdly, you should be able to, to detect disease. So every morning if you need to go and stand somewhere and look at their behavior. Mm. If you see an animal that is not jolly, is not eating well, you need to take keen interest in it. Has it fallen sick or it is satisfied? Then you need to inquire how much milk has come from it. You compare from yesterday mm. so that you're able to detect disease are enough. The third issue is about uh, what we call feeding. What type of food do you feed them? Mm. So if you give them poor, the poor quality of food, they'll give you less milk. Like here, we give them silage, we give them hay, we give them dairy meal, and we give them spent grain. Then we also mix in molas, we mix in um, um, uh, yeast. All those are components to help them to gain strength because they don't get away. Whatever they, their body requires, we bring it here. Mm. So you need to, to feed them well so that you can get high production because our work here is to make sure that we maximize milk. This, their biggest business is milk. Then the fourth item that you need to take into consideration is record keeping. Mm. Whatever takes place on the farm, like as you have come, you must write in our visitor's book. Like as you have found one cow has produced, you must record that it has produced, it has produced at this time. Is it you yourself that uh, recorded no, it? Or it's no, we have a team. Mm. We have a team, this team that I work with. They are the ones who do all this work. Mm. Uh, so you need to record every activity. 
because for us we are able to know this cow got um, pregnant on this date, therefore it will produce on this date. So you have to make sure you yes. know that it is pregnant. Yes, if it changes in the days when it gets pregnant, we get concerned. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to produce on 17th, how come that is 19th that was produced? So how do you know that it is pregnant? From the time, uh, we normally serve them by artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. So the day it gets conceived, uh, served, we note it. If it takes a month without repeating heat, it means it has conceived. Mm. So we, we go on monitoring it. So record keeping is very key mm. on farm management. Then um, after doing all of this, then you need to look at the type of the breed you have. And therefore, when the cow drops from 20 liters, below 20 liters, it is no longer productive. So you need to consider removing it. Because, like, for us in town here, if most of the things are bought. Mm. So you must ask yourself, the money you're putting in, are you getting it out or not? Oh, yeah, not. So once it is less than 20 liters, then you must consider removing it from the farm. But also for us, we are running it as a commercial farm. Mm. If you come uh, with your money, uh, you decide the cow you want, we sit on the table and agree. So I want to, those who are even want to buy good cows, here. I have them here. Yeah, even they have Those who want to learn. Mr. Fred, yeah. you were telling us the Yeah, name. the, the names, this is an IFA. Mm. Uh, it is named according to the people, depending on the, an, who was an IFA. So How an, does an IFA <laughs> <laughs> So we had our friend here <laughs> yeah. who, who was uh, a Muslim, but she liked cows. Uh. So we said, Dad, now you are here. Mm. So this one was called an IFA. This one is called Queenie. Mm. I mean, a piece. piece. Then the other one is in Puga, according to the colors. That one is in Cherenje, according okay. to the colors. Then we have a queen. We have, we have many, all of them, they have different names. Mm. So they are either named according to the color, or according to the name, uh, to the behavior, or according to production, or according to their conduct. Mm. Even with good animals, we call them good names. Mm. Like uh, the peace. Peaceful, yeah, if it is peaceful, then... Like my name, Mahoro. Mahoro. Yes. So I think we're going to get one, we call it Mahoro. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to name one, there's a, a, a jolly one there. Uh, I, I, I name it Mahoro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, that's what we do here. Uh, but it's a joyful job. Mm. Like, uh, you hear people suffering from diseases called stress. You'll never get me with stress. I know. Because you any, have it. anything that will disturb me, mm. I'll come here. And talk to and, you. And, tell, and start playing with my cows. Mm. And as you play, the milk is coming in. As you play, the money is coming in. As you mm. play, the family is getting food. So. True. <laughs> so, Mr. like, how do you manage? Because yeah, like, it is very salary clean. Mm. Like you said, you no. can eat from here, you can drink from here, your milk. No, we have, um, <laughs> we have staff. Every unit has a personal stage there. These are two units. One is staged here, another one is staged the other side. Mm. Whenever it drops a dung, he comes and picks it. Mm. Then after three hours, they wash it with the soap and jig mm. to make sure that there is nothing that has remained. Then in the evening, we we'll bring these mattresses. These are called cow mattresses. In Uganda, we don't have them. We normally import them from Kenya. Uh, and uh, when you put it down, mm. they, for them, they know that it's time for sleeping. So they stop they what they're doing, yes. And whenever you have put a mattress, that's where it is going to sleep. What time do they put the mattresses? Uh, normally after six, after they have cleaned, after they have finished the milking, that's when we put the mattresses in. Mm. Otherwise, when you put the mattresses during the day, they'll be disturbed, they'll mm. not eat, they'll, their attention will go to sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so they are very comfortable mattresses. And, even, even a normal person. and it is meant for one, pass, uh, for one cow. It is meant for one cow. Where you put it, that's where it is going to sleep. Mm. Uh, and you see them fighting if you don't put enough. <laughs> for like comfort purposes. We are like people. Yes. For comfort and warmth. Mm. What are the challenges? Because I believe in any business, there are challenges. However much you get in Yes. Work. There are a lot of challenges, although they are managed by the income that you get from here. Mm. One of the biggest challenges is attitude to work. The workers we have in this country now these days, it is very difficult to do them, to do the work you need, to do them as they wish it to be. So you you have to 
constantly be on phone uh, and uh, make sure that everybody has delivered on his mandate. So therefore, in ensuring that, you end up uh, distributing them in sectors so that everybody is maintaining the sector. So that's one. The second challenge that uh, happens here, in case you get an animal which is sick and you are far, mm. uh, normally the veterinary services in this country are a challenge. Uh, not, maybe, can I call them the, the medics? You tell him my cow is in this form, he said, okay, I'll be coming. He spends a day. Yet the cow is very when, sick. when the cow is very sick. Uh, but for you as a farmer, you would wish to get quick response. Then also the challenge that we have here, because we bring everything here, is the high cost of concentrates, the high cost of, of uh, things that we mix in the feeds. Uh, when you are talking of dairy meal, there are a lot of things. There is a premix, there is a con uh, toxic binder, there is um, uh, dairy premix. So you, there are a lot of things you mix. And those, most of those things are imported mm. and they have a high cost. So you find that they are taking a lot of your money if the, those products were being produced locally. I think the cost would be cheaper and the, high, and the incomes would be high. The biggest, biggest challenge is that we don't have recognized, known, good animal feeds companies. Here in Uganda. In Uganda. Everybody is mixing what he thinks. So for, for you as a farmer, it forces you even to get into mixing. Yet sometimes you, when you do, you're not And that wouldn't be your work. For you, it would be sitting, sending money, they bring uh, the, the meal, and then you feed your cows. But now you are forced to mix because you don't trust the kind of mixtures. So we need to have a reliable animal feed company in Uganda, which is not existing as of now. You're still watching Family Farm with me, the farm girl, and we are here in Chanja with Mr. Fred Bamwini. Yes, uh, Mr. Fred, we're asking ourselves, like, uh, what are those do's and the don'ts that uh, we have to do maybe when we come to the farm or when someone is uh, planning to start, to start a, a farm? Uh, one of the things uh, you don't, uh, you know, there's, you need to put money where you stay. <laughs> you have seen where I stay, yeah. and that's where I put my money. Mm. So by four o'clock, you need to wake up. Every day? Yes. Even when you have workers? What? Workers do what you want to do. Workers will not do what you don't know. So put money where you stay. Mm. That's my, 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 thing, my, view, my thinking and slogan. Uh, two, you wake up at four. By five, you are in the, in the farm. By five, you are in the farm. Uh, they start milking at five, exactly five. Yeah, two, hours, two hours time, we are finished milking in two hours time. Mm. Uh, then during that time, after milking, we start um, cleaning. After milking, we start cleaning and feeding at the same time. As you clean, you are feeding at the same time. Then uh, after doing milking and cleaning at the same time, you feed them. After feeding them, then of course the boys go for their breakfast. Mm. But for me, I normally do it the first one hour, from 4 to 5.30. Mm. You're, you're out of the then I go. I, I have set things to move. Mm. Then uh, in case I'm not around, the, it is the responsibility of the manager here to call me every day at 5.30. Every day? At 5.30 a.m. to tell me the status of the cows. Mm. Then it is also his duty when it is in the morning like 6.30 to stand and watch their behavior and conduct mm. to be able to detect if there is a sick one or not. Then if there is a sick one, we call him a vet to come or if it is a small condition, we can manage it ourselves. We are also paravet of some sort. Yeah. Because we know how to treat some, some diseases. Then um, the milk is taken away 
at exactly six thirty. No, we have uh, a bike, mm. and for us, our method of marketing is that we supply it people's homes. You don't go and no, we we deliver at your home. Mm. So, Mahor, if you tell us where you stay, can you come to that side of me? Yeah, as long as you give us the money, <laughs> our business is market, is, is milk. Mm. Um, our border, border boy will come, mm. deliver the milk at your doorstep. And you will pay money on my mobile money. So how much is a liter? Two two thousand shillings only. Hey. No, at the, you know sometimes. No, for us we, we deliver milk and you pay two thousand only. I've got an experience. You go to buy milk. And that's why you have to pay yeah, me. Yeah. Such that in case there is a divergence from the quality, mm. I need to be notified. Mm. And once I'm notified, we shall sit here and 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 know how did the cows produce water. Mm. Cows are supposed to be producing 90% milk. So that's why I am always in touch with my customers, mm. constant touch myself, and they pay on my phone mm. directly. Uh, so that's the method of, of, of supply. And when you come to visit us, uh, you are supposed to pay 40,000 shillings mm. to come and see what we are doing. I went, uh, our view was lucky out there. Who have gotten it for free? Even yourself, you have not paid. <laughs> <laughs> you should have paid 40,000 shillings to come and see what we do here. Mm. Because I want people to, to know that it is possible to use a small piece of land mm. and do huge work. These animals, if they were to feed on free range, they would be feeding maybe in a half square mile. But they are here in 10 decimals. Even they don't move out. They, don't, they are here permanently. They don't move out at all. They don't move out. So uh, you pay your 40,000 shillings. So when you come, before you reach our farm, you first uh, step in the, in the disinfectant. Like we did. Yeah, we disinfect your food so that you don't bring a disease on the farm. And that's what we do. And once you are here in the farm, then you are able to know what is taking place. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so what are the do's and the don'ts on the farm? Uh, the that they like of course, we don't, allow, uh, we don't allow milk to be removed from here, apart from the border boy. We don't allow cash money here. And it has to be e. Yes. And we don't allow... Um, once you, uh, you spend a, a week, as a worker, we are sure, we are sure that you are going to work. Mm. Because everybody has a department. We don't tolerate uh, uh, unhygienic conditions. Mm. If you can't touch the, the dung, then you are in the wrong place. <laughs> you have to be able to touch yes. the dung. Touch the dung. And also not touching it by force, but also loving it. Mm. Because this is our livelihood. Then also, if you cannot manage recording, then you're in the wrong place. Mm. Uh, like that. But they start learning slowly, slowly. Mr. Fred, you don't employ the girl child. I, I'm not seeing any girl here. No, I don't employ the girl child because of the many challenges. Mm. This kind of work, although you people, you women, you say you are equal with men, but at times we need to admit. So it's not true. <laughs> you need to admit hey. that uh, somebody's daughter to wake her at 4 a.m. every day, it is not easy. Mm. But also to bring somebody's daughter in uh, about 10 boys, and they are here with him every day, with her every day, I'm not sure <laughs> of her security. So in order to avoid, <laughs> in order to avoid the unforeseen, I better have one group. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I better have only girls or uh, only boys because I'm not around to be with them. Yeah, human beings are human beings. Mm. Uh, I would wish to, to prevent those girl child. Mr. 
Mr. Fred, you have told us that uh, this farm has stood for 15 years. Sometimes to sustain a business for 15 years, it's really not easy. Mm. And uh, there are a lot of challenges. Some of them get out of business when they are saying they have not gotten anything. Uh, the business is really so, so not working out well, even the employers themselves. Mm. So how have you managed uh, or what are the achievements that you have no, gotten? Of course we have them? made a lot of achievements. I told you we started with three cows, mm. now we have 40. That's the first achievement. Mm. Uh, the second achievement is that by the time I started, I was feeding them on green matter. Now they are totally 100% on dry matter. Mm. The third achievement, with that time we didn't have uh, the means of transport. They have managed to buy themselves a motorcycle which takes milk. Yeah. They have managed to buy a, small, a truck you have seen for yeah, feeds. Mm. Uh, was bought by this farm. And we have also acquired some land now mm. where, we are planning, where we are planting our, our pasture. Uh, because in future, you cannot continue scavenging for grass. Mm -hmm. So in the future, we're going to be having our own pasture because now we have land. So um, the only uh, disadvantage you have got, I think COVID has hit people very much. Uh, because I used to sell um, an average of 20 cows per month or per year. But since this year began, I think I've sold about three. Three? Yeah. So the production, the, the people don't have money yeah. to, to, to invest in buying cows. And that is affecting our cash flow. Because when you, buy, when you sell a cow, then it, you acquire another asset or you, or you improve, or you do some improvement. So since COVID, I, I can see the effect. Mm -hmm. uh, two, since COVID, the prices of feeds have gone high. Uh, I used to buy a ton of moras. Moras, these are the byproducts of sugar that we mix in, uh, in the feeds to be able to increase the energy and, mobile and increase digestion, quick digestion. Mm -hmm. Now a ton has a foot 600,000. A ton? A ton. I used to buy a ton of spent grain at 70,000. Now it is uh, 120. Aye. So the cost is, is increasing. Is there anything that you import from out? Mm, yes. Uh, I don't personally import, mm. but we buy from the importers. Mm. Like the dairy concentrate, like these premix, mazua, the, the toxic binder. Here Most in Uganda, they are not, they are not there. They are, they, are, they are imported by, by some people. So the cost has gone up, mm. and uh, we have not increased our cost, uh, our, our milk. Because I should also have increased my milk to mm. 4,000. Why did you increase? Uh, I, you know, getting a customer you have lived with for some time, it's not easy. Yeah. So we handle our customers with kid gloves, <laughs> because we want to maintain them. Yeah. Uh, but we are still breaking even, that's why we have not increased but we're also mindful that if the costs incre continue increasing, mm. either we reduce the number of animals we, he we have here, we must also see how to cut the costs, mm. or we reduce the number of workers. So there are some of these costs that are going to reduce if the, con the prices are continuing to, imply to increase. Yeah, M Mr. Fred, you didn't tell us uh, how many liters you produce in a day. I produce between 350 to 450 liters mm. per day in a day. And our highest animal uh, piece produces 40 liters when it has covered down. Then, uh, then uh, um, the, the, the poorest performing is 20 liters. When it goes beyond below 20 liters, then we remove it. Mm -hmm. Because it means it's no, longer, it's no longer productive. Yeah, and then I see those measuring. Do they measure these cows? Yes, we, 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 we intend to we measure the cow to know the kilos the, the cow has, uh, to know the age. Is it a must? We must try to, to know how old is this one. Mm. Uh, when is it supposed to come on heat? Uh, if it is a calf, uh, because it normally comes heat on heat at one year, and then we add three months, mm. then we serve it. Uh, that's why we take a lot of records, so that we are able to monitor what is taking place on an animal. Yeah, so Mr. Fred, you're going to give advice to the youth. I usually see most youth right now, they wake up on Ludo, Matad, and uh, a man like you who is really uh, 
on schedules and your meeting deadlines, we expect you not to do these blue collar jobs. So what is the advice that you're giving? That one word you're giving to a youth out there. I, I think we have a challenging environment in the country uh, whereby attitude to work is almost negative. Because what you are seeing in me now, I got it from my father and from my mother. Although I have gone to school, although I'm employed by government, but those traits I acquired and, and, and works I acquired from my parents are still reigning. Therefore, I think there is a huge debate which must be resolved whether attitude to work is preached or forced. Me, I was forced to learn to work. And I'm forcing my children to learn to work. Mm. But you see, another thing, uh, Mr. See? Fred, mm -hmm. is uh, broken homes. There's, you usually watch the news, there's domestic violence, uh, broken homes, single fathers, single mothers, yes. and everyone is doing their things. No, those broken homes you're talking about, there is where a child is residing. Either the child is residing with the father mm. or with the mother. I don't care. But I'm saying where you are raising this child, this child should be taught how to work. And without work, you cannot eat. Even the Bible says it. If you cannot work, you should not be eating. Therefore, to me, the youth, I have ever been a youth. I can tell you, you can be, a, you can be an engineer, you can be a lawyer, but at certain time, T, you retire from that profession. And when you retire, where are you going? My one cow pays me better than government. Therefore, it does not matter where you have got them the money, whether it is a white collar or blue collar, but the money which is yours, I th like money for, uh, for farming, is clean money and undisturbed. Nobody demands from it. So I appeal to everybody watching me, aspire and endure at least to raise one animal. Even if you don't have land, like me, I don't have land in Kampala, but I'm cutting grass from state council from the sides of the roads, and I have raised herds of cows. You can also do it. The youth, you stop minimizing and undermining work. Even if you are educated, once you have the money, money has no color, has no title. Money is money. So money from cows and money from the salary, all is my money. And for you who does not even have a job, you should be more interested in this than any other person. Mm. Because this is the job. The other thinking of saying that the job must be for the office should be uh, the campaign and should be stopped. I want to appeal. I'm sure, I'm aware that Family TV is for Church of Uganda. Yeah. I want to appeal and, 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 uh, and invite the Church of Uganda leadership to come and see what we are doing here. Because they have the platform, come and see what we are doing. I know if you inform your flock, you can go and do miracles and wonders to those churchgoers. I thank you. Wow, you've had it for yourself. Yes, money from the office and money from my farm, it is all my money. So please watch Family TV and this has been Farm Girl here in Chanja with Mr. Fred Bamwine. You've had it for yourself. Just please stay tuned and you're going to get the latest in all the farms and we are here for you all the time. So food for humanity and what I've gotten that if you can't sit down in your farm and have food nicely, just know that... Uh, you're out of business.